What's going on? The GPU is absolutely maxed out. <laughs> What's going on? Look at this. This is only 4K. It can't play this back. Welcome to Tech Notice. This over here is the best PC you could build right now. Like we're talking about 12900K, RTX 3090, 64 gigabytes of DDR5. And then on this side, we have the best Mac possible. Mac Studio with M1 Ultra chip, 20 core CPU, 64 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of unified memory, one terabyte of super fast storage. They both cost around around $5,000. Now the question is, which one is better in DaVinci Resolve live editing performance? Let's put them head to head. ArtGrid is an online stock footage platform that offers the highest quality stock video from HD to 8K, ProRes, Log and RAW formats. Active subscription provides you access to unlimited downloads and a royalty-free worldwide license. The license doesn't expire even when the subscription has been cancelled. ArtGrid catalog is updated daily and the subscription can be configured to fit your needs. Get two months for free when joining ArtGrid through the links in the description below. Okay, so this is how it's going to go. As you can see, there's two separate desktops. I can switch between them two. Nothing is recorded on the devices. The HDMI out is recorded, so no like performance is bottlenecked by you know that. So we can just flick between them two. And just to show that this PC actually costs roughly around five grand as well, we can take this one up. I just made this PC part picker quickly, put them in, and it comes roughly just a little bit over five grand. But at the same time, we do have three terabytes of storage rather than one over there. So we have one terabyte Gen 4 for OS, and then one project drive that's two terabytes that's super, super fast. And then there's two more slots upgradable if you want to add any more storage in here that's it you're stuck with one terabyte of storage but this video is not really about like the features of each of them it's really like the best of mac and the best of pc let's see which one is better then so both of them have davinci resolve 17.5.4.5 both of the projects are absolutely identical everything is stored on the devices so let's have a look how good this is. So first of all, now this PC, by the way, I have color grade added to all of those clips as well. And if you're wondering what the color grade is, if you go to the color grade tab over here, you can see there's a little bit of curves, one lot, second lot, and a little bit of noise uh, reduction added. So this is just to kind of emulate the type of editing anyone would do really if you're a professional editing a little bit of color grading here and there obviously some people go a little bit less some people go absolutely crazy with lots of masks and other bits of editing but this is just something you know something in the middle there very important thing about the pc is also that we have the igpu enabled because a lot of benchmarks that you see online when comparing windows things to uh, the mac is that they don't enable the igpu on the 12th gen in this inside the cpus as well when comparing these two because it's a big mistake by the way our ddr5 there is running only at 4000 megahertz it's like the lowest of ddr5 you can get so there's a massive upgrade path possible and you know you can get 6400 megahertz and so on which will be so much faster but this is just that because this particular combination i have issues running xmp with 5200 megahertz when four sticks are enabled anyway completely another thing more into that on my channel but just to show this is what's going on so then 30 frames per second 4 to 2 by the way our timeline is 4k timeline okay and then there is no proxies no nothing no render cache nothing no proxies have done just how it is okay let's go so 4 to 2 10 bit 4k here it's scrubs through very very like okay i guess just normal 25 frames per second 4 to 2 10 bit the same it's it's very good now this is SI, all intra codec. It's a little bit easier on the system because less compression. It's very, very smooth as well. So let's move on to the Mac. Let's see if it's any different. Let's put the color grade back on. By the way, on the N1 Ultra, on the top corner here, you can see kind of what's going on with the system. So this over here is just like the CPU utilization, okay? This over here is the RAM, or this can't, can't call RAM it's a memory unified memory access how many how much of the memory is used over there and this is really disk like in and ins and outs like down like sends and receives and this is the gpu as you can see over here so m1 ultra how much of the gpu is utilized and so on so 
let's start on the timeline and it's very similar i don't really notice difference very much the same maybe this 4k 25 frames per second is slightly choppier si well i don't i don't really notice a difference let's press play okay what's going on look the gpu is absolutely maxed out on this device and as you can see we are running exactly the same 17.4.5 on this this is the latest one of the vinci resolve and we can't quite play it back smoothly let's see if 25 frames per second plays back smoothly <laughs> what's going on oh well it's a little bit choppy playing back here as well okay let's go to windows let me see what's going on here can we play back this smoothly no problem just pressing play it just plays no issues whatsoever let's go to this one wait i'm oh, sorry missed the play button no issues 24 frames per second instantly and keeps playing let's go back to the m1 ultra pressing play chugging along can't do it <laughs> look at this this is only 4k h264 10 bit 422 it's a little bit hard to play back but okay i'm i'm a little bit surprised that this is going on let me show you the settings here as well um memory and gpu as you can see everything is is that inputs outputs let's see decode options decompression yeah everything is is happening just to show that i am running the ultra chip as you can see m1 ultra 64 gigabytes of that and if you go system information you can see graphics display 64 core gpu it can't play this back let's move on this is 4k 60 frames per second okay so timeline performance no problem here actually uh this is 420 8 bit this is 422 10-bit. As you can see, the 10-bit on this M1 Ultra is much harder to play back than this one over here. Let me press play. Still playback is very, very hard with the color grade and everything enabled. Just can't quite play it back. Take the color grade off, no problem. Plays it back, absolutely no problem. With color grade, struggling. Seriously, seriously struggling. Looks like the GPU is utilized the most here. But the GPU is the bottleneck here. Okay. PC time. Okay, timeline scrubbing, no problem here really. A little bit choppy, but I think our color grade is quite heavy as, here as well. 4 to 2, 10 bit. Still quite okay. I'd say scrubbing through or like clicking through the timeline is much easier. Pressing play. No problem. Plays this back. Absolutely no problem. H265 codec, okay? This is Canon R5, 10 bit, 4 to 2, 60 frames per second, 4K footage. Very, very hard footage to really play back uh, on any of the devices because you really need hardware acceleration on this. And unless you're running the Intel's 11th gen iGPUs or 12th gen, you really don't have that. Even the NVIDIA NVEC codecs, codecs, encoders, or decoders can't play this back. So timeline scrubbing. Okay, there's some kind of green thing happening going on. I'm not sure if this is if you can see this as well 
and if this is just because of the display capture or this is actually on the codex i think this is on the display capture here but timeline really is quite okay let's press play let's see what happens plays back this is with the color grade by the way as well you can take it off and put it back on Okay, a little bit of lagging there. It isn't quite as smooth as as previously. But look looks like that's that's fine. Look at that. No problem. Moving on to Mac. Okay, scrubbing through timeline. It feels a little bit more a little bit more like not as smooth though not as smooth you take this off it's very smooth without the color grade it's as smooth as it can be just because the encoders there are fully playing this back that's no problem playing this back but as soon as you add a little bit of color grade look at that it is actually is it okay is it playing back yeah that's not smooth playback let me start again that's very interesting. That's very interesting. Do you know what? Let me just restart the system and then see what happens. Maybe there's something clogging the system. Let's start it. Let's see if this is any different. Okay, we've restarted. Let's try again. Timeline. Okay, let's let's get a reference. What's, what was this timeline here like? Okay, timeline's very... Actually... There's a little bit of an issue here, some kind of green thing going on. I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me see the timeline. It feels like... I don't know, does it to you? But it feels like it's a little bit more choppier on this um, Mac Studio Ultra. And for some reason, we can't play this back with the color grade on. And I can show you, look, it's, it's exactly the same color grade. Two lots, curves, a little bit of noise direct noise um, reduction. I guess the noise reduction is really the one that pulls it down. I bet it could play actually back the lots. If you took the noise reduction off just for a second here, let me see if it plays back. Let's go back here. Yeah, that's the that's the bottleneck here. The noise reduction is the one that really can't play this back. As soon as you add the noise, the look, look what's happened to the playback here. This has got noise reduction, just can't quite do it. So if you have any noise reduction in your workflow, you can see the PC is much better if you have like RTX 1390 than than this one over here. Let's try 124 20 frames per second here. Let's take the color grade off and let's see how we're playing back this on the timeline. This is H265, I think 420, 10-bit. Very, very smooth. This is 422, 10-bit. It's pretty smooth as well. This is H264, uh, 422 and 420. So, really timeline, no problem. Let's press play. Playing back, absolutely no problem here. Let me go to here on Windows, the same thing. Okay, timeline. A little bit more choppy, I would say, on Windows here. Definitely more choppy. Yeah, not definitely not as good on Windows side in terms of the raw playback of this. Let's press play here. Although when you press play, it still plays it back, no problem. Okay. This is hard for it to play back. So 422 10-bit, H265, 120 frames per second. The encoders aren't quite hacking this, as you can see. 
it was a little bit okay now it is but i don't yeah it's not quite hacking this just because the the igpo has two of those encoders whereas mac has loads more in, in there but it's still like able to play this back but when we take put the color grade on very choppy can't do it at all actually a little bit Strat H264. Plays back. But I'd say Mac has much better timeline performance. Definitely a win for the M1 Ultra here. Much more smoother. Let's put the color grade on. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah. That's much worse of a performance. As you can see, it can't catch up, up at all. But in here, if we put this on. See, it's actually playing it back. That's interesting. 24 frames per second, huge color grade on. Well, huge. No problem. Interesting. So depending like what color grade situation is, if it's very simple, simple like timeline things, then this is much better at this. But if you add in color grades and making it more difficult, then obviously this is a little bit harder. Okay, this is red 5K timeline. Red raw 5K, let's press play. Whoa, even the PC is here struggling to play this back at full resolution. Okay, end up actually playing this back. 24 frames per second, no problem. Let's move on to red 5K footage timeline with the color grade doable just a little bit laggy or jello effect come on can we get to 24 frames per second can we catch up okay with without the color grade absolutely smooth as you can see color grade is the one that makes it choppy this is very very smooth let's try the windows pc without the color grade yeah, Windows isn't as good at playing this back raw. As you can see, without the color grade, it's a little bit more choppy than Apple. Look at this. This is absolutely smooth, smooth as anything. That's absolutely fantastic. Let's move on to 6K. So this is 6K B raw. It's very, very smooth. B raw should be like one of the easiest things to play back, even with the color grade, I think. No, that noise reduction is a little bit hard for this to do. As you can see, can't quite reduce the noise live. The graphics power isn't quite as good with this, but still, still very good. I'd say not a big, not a, not a big thing. Let's move to 6K Red Raw. Obviously, try the B Raw in here as well. Without the color grade, smooth as butter. Color grade on. Doable. Very, very good still. Let's press play. Look, play it back, no problem, straight away. That 3090 really, really, really shows its like capabilities here when you're doing this type of noise reduction live as well. So, Red Raw, 6K. First of all, let's try without the color grade. Timeline is a little bit like jello -y. Doesn't quite play it back as nicely. We're gonna press play. A few issues. It shows 24 frames per second, but hey, PC, you're lying to me. This is not a smooth playback, as you can see. This is definitely not a smooth playback. Let's see with our Mac Studio M1 Ultra timeline performance. Whoa, that's very, very smooth. Very smooth. Let's press play. No problem. That's easy. Look at that. That's absolutely amazing. So Red Raw, if you have this, whoa, this is the best that I have seen Red Raw played back on any device, especially this 6K Red Raw. Look at that. Super, super smooth. Very buttery smooth. 
with color grade though. Still doable. Just hard to pray back that. Yeah, that noise reduction, not, not very good. But if you just stay away from the noise reductions, maybe just color grades, I bet we could be fine. This is much better on the M1 Ultra. Yeah, can you see Windows? Windows can't quite do it. Nope, nope, nope. So let's move on to 8K. This is Canon R5 8K, uh, Canon RAW, as you can see. So let's have a look at the timeline. That's very good here. No problem without the color grade. Very, very smooth. Put the color grade on. Still able to do it actually. If I press play, wow. Completely fine doing it back. No problem, plays it back. M1 Ultra without the color grade. Very good timeline as well. Very, very smooth. I'd say very similar. Probably a little bit better on the M1 Ultra here. Like how it feels a little bit more smoother. No problem playing it back when it's uh, without the color grade. Put the color grade on. Not bad either, actually. Let's press play. Oh, yeah. Can't quite play this back. There we go, 100% maxed out GPU. That's the bottleneck. Let's try Red Raw 8K. That's the last one. Obviously with the color grade, can't quite do much here. No, let's try without the color grade. Super, super smooth. Like this is buttery smooth. If you don't have any noise reduction on, you're gonna have great time with the M1 Ultra. This is amazing, very, very smooth. As you can see here, and press play, plays it back, no problem at all. Let's try the windows. So without the color grade first, it's a little bit more jumpy. Definitely not as smooth as in there. Like it's doable but definitely not as good as this one there. I mean, it's catching up, but once you've felt this, it's definitely not as good. So pressing play, it, it kind of, see? It caught up and plays it back, but not, not even near as good as this is. Pressing play, boom, instantly 24 frames per second, 8K. That's insane. This isn't at, as good at all on the Windows side. It does play it, as you can see, press play. It takes time and then catches up 24 frames per second. But this is much better. Now, when you put the color grade on, now that's when I bet there's a difference. There's, there's a little bit catching up, very similar performance, and then catches up. If we put the color grade on here on the M1 Ultra, on. Will it catch up? Will it catch up? The PC has just played this back. No problem. M1 Ultra still look at that. The GPU is absolutely maxed out in here. Not quite as good. So then, in conclusion then, is the M1 Ultra very good in this like little timeline test here? Yes and no, depending on your workflow. I think this was very surprising to me to find out that the noise reduction, if you're trying to do that live playback, suddenly will absolutely cripples this device. Now, I wonder if there is any more utilizations or optimization that, that can be made by software updates. I would love to see that. So let me know in the comment section below if you know any updates that are coming up. But I did not expect this to happen with this M1 Ultra. Now, seeing what Apple was showing them and all the encoders inside the M1 Max, now M1 Ultra having all double of all of those, you know, 
H.264 5 encoders and decoders and ProRes and RedRaw and all of that. I would expect this to be absolutely amazing at that. Plus 64 core GPU, that was compared to the RTX 3090. Really, the GPU is the bottleneck in, inside this system. The encoders are absolutely amazing in there. And if you don't do it so complicated, like, you know, have the noise reduction on or try to have it a bit later, then the M1 Ultra is much smoother. As you can see, like RedRaw breezing through, that's absolutely like amazing if you want that type of playback on windows systems we're gonna have to cash out to a threadripper system that's going to be completely another league of a price point probably three times as much as this m1 ultra so at that like kind of view the m1 ultra is absolutely amazing but the rdx 3090 holds it class on its own as well here especially if you're doing a lot of color grading uh, noise reduction all of the load can be taken off the cpu and put on the gpu obviously this cpu isn't like the best because it's actually only eight performance cores and eight uh, efficiency cores whereas this one is 20 cores so actually the cpu performance is ahead on the m1 ultra as well but just like my observations here is the m1 ultra so much better than the pc yes and no at the same time in some cases absolutely it is amazing but in a lot of like normal workflows i think the pc will hold its like own as well so i think you really have to decide like which operating system you like and which ecosystem you like uh, you know whether pc or mac obviously another massive drawback for the uh, m1 ultra or mac studio is you can't upgrade this at all but the pc you can configure it upgrade it service it yourself do everything yourself no problem there there's a little bit more diy uh, availability or options but at the same time this is going to stay in your studio you're never going to take this anywhere this guy you can put three of these in your pack pack and travel wherever you want so that's absolutely amazing that you can get something like this portable that's awesome so my friends let me know what you think in the comment section below likes if you enjoyed it subs if you'd like to see more and i'll see you next time Bye-bye.